Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews. I'm your host, Christopher Brown. In April of 2024, we ventured to Regina, Saskatchewan for the 2024 Saskatchewan Urban Municipalities Association Convention. Though this episode may be shorter and briefer than our standard episodes, its significance remains undiminished. So we'll be right back after a quick message with Cross Border Interviews featuring Councillor Ed Sigmuth from the town of Pilot Butte. Are you passionate about local governance and municipal issues? Do you believe in the power of community-driven conversations? Then join us at the Cross Border Network, where we bring together voices from across Canada to shine a spotlight on the challenges and the triumphs of our municipalities. But we need your support to keep the conversation going. Visit crossborderinterviews.ca today to show your support by backing the show monthly or making a one-time annual donation. Your contribution will help us grow and expand our reach, bringing important stories to even more listeners across the nation. Together, we can make a difference. Together, we can amplify the voices of local communities. Together, we can shape a brighter future for all. Cross Border Network, where local matters and your support counts. Visit us today at crossborderinterviews.ca. Ed, I want to start by asking you a simple question here, if that's okay. Okay. Where'd your sense of duty to serve come from? Uh, well, just to give you some background, I was actually a municipal administrator for 31 years and then did a semi-retirement to mentor for five years. And during that time, uh, got elected on council in Pilot Butte and now I'm serving my third term, and I'll wait and see whether I go <laughs> for another one. But. So can I ask a stupid question? You have been, uh, been around the block municipally yeah. for almost 40-some-odd years. Actually, 42, yeah. 42 years. Has municipal governance changed in that time? Definitely, in your, yeah. How so? Uh, well, I guess when I started out as an administrator, it was like, while well, you were learning things and you were a respected professional in the community. Like I started out actually in Redverse and then moved to Pilot Butte. And like in, in those days as an administrator, you got some experience, you moved to a bigger community and that. And then uh, actually I also, worked for well it was urban affairs at the time which is now government relations but it's had different names as an advisor just to help out like other administrators and that and then like after you've been sort of your own boss and working in the municipal field like working in the government wasn't for me so went back to Pilot Butte worked there for a number of years and then all of a sudden council changed and they wanted to go a different direction so that was fine went to Carlisle worked there for a couple of years then there was a job actually in the Rhines with Northern Municipal Services so went up there and worked for well a year and eight months I lasted one winter and then the <laughs> You were done after uh, one yeah, and done. Uh, yeah, well, hey, I'm prairie flat boy and uh, trees, rocks, and lakes is not mine. Like, but so ended up coming back and then actually worked at Fort Coppell until I retired. And then, like I said, was looking like time just to retire. And then after about six months, decided, well, I'll, I'll go back on the council and that and uh, also too like how I know Don is like we're both on the board of examiners for urban municipal administrators so that's where I was doing the mentoring and that like just because well like I said when I started out somebody yeah. helped me so kind of I believe in karma and payback to, so help somebody else out so that's that's yeah, amazing yeah. um you, you, I, I'm assuming you've come to the realization that 
the decisions you make at that council table, you're not pleasing 100% of the people in exactly, your community. Yep. How do you make those decisions based on the, good, the greater good of the community? Because you, you have a deciding vote in a lot of the issues that are coming up in council, and you have to make sure that the votes you take, the votes you make, the, the yay votes, are going to impact people the best, but not negatively. How do you do that? Um, well, I guess it's like it, I try, and that's the benefit from being both the administrative side and now on the political side is that when it, when you were the administrator, like council made the policies and you wanted to have things for the betterment of your community. And I think that's one thing that when you ask what the reason is or why I'm still doing it this long, because I still feel I can offer something to my community. And also, like, you respect your, like, the democratic system and that. And, hey, maybe my ideas aren't right. And also, too, like, I'm always willing to try something new. And, uh, like, the gray hair or lack of hair sometimes doesn't mean it. And, uh, like, you just, but I think everyone that's in the municipal is trying to do it for the betterment of their community and, and that's what you like that's what i do and and that but so can i ask the karma question a little bit here for a second because saskatchewan is heading to a uh, municipal election later this year in yeah. november so that means municipal leaders are thinking like yourself or thinking about either offering to stand yeah. or uh taking uh, the long walk in the snow as the old yeah. adage says yeah. politically then at the same time, there are people thinking, maybe I should put my name forward. Maybe I should be on council. What advice would you give a prospective candidate that is potentially looking at joining or putting their name forward onto a city council or a town council or even a village council? I, I think, like, the, to me, what you'd have to have is the commitment to your community and also try to do it not just for your own personal interests and that and also like be prepared to spend the time to do it and, and understand everything and uh, it it's not that simple and and the same thing that like going back to my administrator background and uh, that's where like being on the board of examiners that some of the small communities figure you can hire anybody off the street and come and put them into an office and and uh, same thing that well anybody can be a counselor because well Joe has a, a business and Sally does something else and okay so the, that's the mayor and a counselor and that but it, you're really running a business and but to me it's like any of the decisions you make as a counselor, it's you're even more careful. Like with your money, if you waste it, well, you you suffer the consequences. If it's the public money, well, okay, why do you spend it on this and not that? And you have to account to people, or or sometimes, and this is a, a difference too that, uh, like there's a seven member council with us it's not always unanimous decisions but once it's passed whether it's six one five two four three it's a council decision and hey i might have been opposed to it but that's it. And, uh, it does it does does there also have to be learnt respect, right? Because those those six four those six yep. one that five two that four three yep. vote at the end of the day you all have to come back to the council table the next yeah. week and do the yeah. exact same thing over yeah. again. And maybe next week it will be 4-3 and it will be a completely different makeup oh, exactly. of who that 4-3 is. Yeah. How much respect goes into play when it comes to being a municipal councillor for your fellow councillors? I, I think that that's the key part. And if you don't have that, it really like, uh, restricts or defeats the purpose. Like, and, well, like I said, I'm on my third term now. The first two terms were like good, and when you have seven different people, you're gonna have different opinions. But 
Like, that's the other thing you have to have a short memory that, okay, yeah, I voted against somebody on this motion, but the next motion, yeah, we're on the same page. So I think that that's a common thing that you do. And like for somebody else, like you have to come in with the idea that, like, and I guess that's one observation I've had is that some people will come in thinking, I'm gonna change the world and do everything. And, and the old uh, thing, well, council did everything wrong, administration's doing it wrong and all that. And then when you get on or that and find out that, yeah, there are rules we have to follow, like you just can't do things and that. So, so that, uh, I think that's the part and like just respect for the process. And, so I want to ask my final question because okay. I, you're a busy man and you got a few other th breakout yeah. sessions you have to head out to here. But in your opinion, what makes P Pilot Butte, I was going to say Pitcher Butte, but no, uh, that's, yeah. a, that's another municipality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pilot Butte, such a unique place to live, work, and raise a family. Um, well, I think it, it's the best of both. Like you've got, we're close to the city, so you've got that. Uh, it's... It's got the urban growth. We've got young families. Like that's the one thing. Like even since I've lived there, that it's uh, like we lose between about eighteen and twenty year olds. They go to education or something, move away, trying different things, but come back in that thirty to thirty five age because they want to raise a family in the small town that they grew up on. And it's also like, we're not the city, so it's, but by that same token, it, it's changed more now as the city grows. It's more uh, a city, whereas before you had like, people from more of the rural areas moving. And we also have a lot of the seniors because with healthcare, and they don't want to move into Regina or Saskatoon or that, but we're close, so so that that's another factor. But Ed, I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your busy Stuma okay. convention and doing this. Greatly yeah, appreciate sure. it. Okay, well, thanks. Before you. We want to thank the Saskatchewan Urban Municipality Association for inviting us to this year's SUMA convention in Regina, Saskatchewan. This episode would not have been achievable without their support. Now, if today's episode sparked your interest, hit that subscribe button now. Stay in the loop with all our diverse content covering everything from municipal affairs to our in-depth conversations on the cross-border interviews or our eye-opening exploration of local governance in the political trenches, local government at work. We are your go-to source for comprehensive municipal coverage committed to keeping you well-informed as well as engaged. But your support is the backbone of our growth and the maintenance of the top-notch content you have come to enjoy. If you can, consider backing the show. Every contribution, big or small, goes a long way in amplifying the depth and the breadth of our programming. Find the support page link on the Cross Border Interviews website today. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, but as always, just keep talking.